Reva Abala joins me now from Austin, Texas. She is the vice president of global analysis at Stratfor, a geopolitical intelligence firm. Thanks so much for joining us. Do you think we're close to seeing foreign forces Thank on you. the ground in Syria? Turkey has talked about it, as has Saudi, but will it actually happen? I think inevitably you are going to see Turkish forces in northern Syria this year. Timing is, of course, tricky because there are a lot of details here that need to be worked out. But this is, you know, an existential issue for Turkey, as you described. If Turkey sees a stretch of Kurdish territory along its border in northern Syria, um, that is not something that Turkey is going to live with. And so since it has the justification to move in 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 saying that they need to clear out islamic state presence in that that area between the euphrates river and the area where we see ypg in the west and northwestern syria they they can essentially use the islamic state reasoning to say we have to move in um, secondarily they have the kurdish threat they want to respond to and establish a blocking position but look the turks are not going to be reckless about this nor are the saudis or the emiratis or anybody that would join that coalition this still comes back to the united states and turkey knows that and they know that the united states needs an understanding with russia before they actually proceed in any operation to on any gr larger scale to establish the safe zone that Turkey has been advocating for for some time. And really, the way to watch and assess the timing of that operation is really going to be contingent on that Russian-U.S. conversation more than anything. You talk about getting an agreement with Russia, but uh, who is going to get that agreement? You say it falls into the hands of the United States, but Russia hasn't really seemed to care what foreign interests are in Syria. This is Russia's battle to fight for its interests in the region and keep Bashar al-Assad in power. Mm -hmm. And so the Russian game here is extremely complex. And yes, when you look at it, Russia does not look particularly cooperative on the battlefield. And you have to ask yourself, you know, why has Russia pushed the Kurdish issues so hard on Turkey? It's not just to bully Turkey, right? T Russia knows very well how sensitive Turkey is to the Kurdish issue. So when it, for example, last week, opens an office for YPG in Moscow and invites members of the HDP, invites even representatives from the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine, they're sending a message that, look, there are no limits to our support for Kurdish militants and groups that are a threat to Ankara. And so if you ask yourself, why is Russia doing it? They know they're pushing Turkey over the edge. Turkey then has to show to the United States that, look, we need to take matters into our own hands. These are our national interests. We're going to move. The U.S. then looks at Turkey and says, well, I can't afford a World War III on my hands if I see another skirmish on the battlefield between Turkey and Russia. And then that brings the United States back into the conversation with Russia, which is exactly what Russia is intending to do. So when we look at Syria, yes, Syria has a strategic interest for Russia, but the primary strategic interest for Russia is right on in the former Soviet periphery where it's watching a NATO buildup. It's trying to measure how much more assistance the U.S. is going to give to Ukraine. And it's trying to negotiate on those issues with the United States using Syria as its battleground. Reva Bala, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much for sharing your insights.